post combine mock draft Monday. Keith Sanchez is next mocking. Justin Fields wins, guys, because there's no quarterback going to the Chicago Bears. Who did they select? Marvin Harrison Jr. We're going to talk about this and more coming up next. You are locked on NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Locked On family? Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast. Cover your favorite draft prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your boy, Damian Parson, always on the ones and twos. You can find and follow me on X at DP underscore NFL. I'm a national scout and a senior draft analyst. And guys, thank you for making Locked On your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our everydayers. And I got to kick this intro over to my guy, Mr. LSU himself, Keith Sanchez. You can find and follow him on X at the Talent Code. You talk to him, baby. What's up, Locked On family? Let's get locked in. This is Keith Sanchez, 2019 national champ with those LSU Bengal Tigers, man. And what here to bring you championship level content surrounding the NFL draft 24 7, 365, man. I would like to say shout out to our everydayers. Thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day, man. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you comment. And if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel for the best draft content. DP, you said it, man. It is mock draft Monday. Day. Yes, we have Justin Fields. He's staying in Chicago. So who did the Chicago Bears get? Marvin Harrison Jr. We're going to talk about how that was able to happen, DP. But before we get started, man, why don't you hit him with our title sponsor? Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All right, guys, you already know, Keith's post-combine mock draft Monday at number one. We had the shakeup that Keith was alluding to. The Washington Commanders traded up with the Chicago Bears to select Caleb Williams, quarterback out of USC, at pick number two. But the second overall pick, the Chicago Bears, with the trade down, select Marvin Harrison Jr., wide receiver from Ohio State. At pick three, the New England Patriots select Drake May, quarterback out of North Carolina at pick four. The Arizona Cardinals select Rome Adunze, wide receiver from Washington at pick number five. The Los Angeles Chargers select Brock Bowers, tight end out of Georgia at pick six. The New York Giants select Jaden Daniels, QB out of LSU at pick seven. The Tennessee Titans select Joe Alt, offensive tackle out of Notre Dame at pick eight. The Atlanta Falcons select Dallas Turner, edge rusher from Alabama. At pick nine, the Chicago Bears select Olu Fashanu, offensive tackle from Penn State. And at number 10, the New York Jets select Malik Neighbors, wide receiver from LSU. So, Keith, let's go back up to the top. The Chicago Bears double down at wide receiver. You got DJ Moore. Now you give them Marvin Harrison Jr. What made you s- decide after the combine to say, you know what? I'm not going to give him a quarterback. I'm going to give him the best player in the draft. Yeah, I think this – I don't – when I look at this – because I see a lot of, you know, from national news that it almost appears that, hey, they can't pass up on a top tier quarterback yet again. Right. Or, you know, the conversation is they have to take Keller Williams. But I believe that the Chicago Bears, they have put themselves, DP, in a spot where they have leverage. And, and here's the reason, right, that they have two second round picks for 2025 right and so if you trade this first round pick at the very least you're gonna ask for a first back and maybe another second right and so now you're talking about in 2025 having two ones right that you could trade away and potentially three twos or you know some combination of three first round picks or three second round picks with the combination of first rounders mixed in there so we talked about this dp that if it doesn't work after you drafted two premier players right a marvin harrison jr and a olu fashano right you can always you know shake some trees and see what free agent quarterbacks out there that are disgruntled and then you bring them into a situation where they have marvin harrison jr olu fashanu um you know dj moore right and you know and a couple of the other wide receivers that they have that the the chicago bears would be an attractive destination offensively and it's something that they haven't been in a very while and that's it and that's if they decide to just go ahead and draft a quarterback so i think the chicago bears are actually in 
more of a position where they can take their time and, 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 you know, leverage themselves and they don't have to just take, you know, it's not for sure that we have to take Caleb Williams and, you know, the, the, the Washington situation, we talked about the hometown uh, situation, you know, for our every day as I know they heard us talk about it before. So I just, I, I think it's going to happen. Right. Yeah. No, listen, it, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a fun shakeup because at the end of the day, it's still in the realm of possibilities, right. Where, you know, you are, uh, you know, the, the Ryan Poles, the GM, and you're like, all right, talk to this coaching staff. They really believe in fields. They saw the jump they needed to see as a passer after, you You know, it's crazy. After you get him an actual receiver, a number one guy, a guy that can actually make plays for him. Now you see the, the, the elevation in this game, but I love the Olu pick, right? Braxton Jones has been solid for a day, day three pick, but I got the chance to select an elite caliber tackle. I'm taking that right now. You have, mm -hmm. and it's crazy because that'll be like back to back picks at nine, if I remember correctly. I think they selected yeah. Darnell, Darnell Wright last year at nine. So now you got two young physical tackles that's going to help the run game, right? But also now, when you have, especially have, when you have a quarterback that has the get out of trouble free card in terms of Justin Fields and his mobility, I think that's I think that's a great deal. Now for me, Keith, I look at pick four, and it's like I remember we talked about it, right? It was like, man, Marvin Harris is not on the board. But the Cardinals, Malik Neighbors would be a great fit. But I and I but I also love the Rome fit as well because Rome showcased at the combine this past yep. weekend his speed, his leaping ability, which is all over his tape, right? The balls, just the smoothness of his game, right? A guy that just he gets open, he could do it routinely, right? Re routes releases are still something i think releases is where he can really take his game to the next level of just improving and expanding that bag but that's just getting with the right you know just getting with the right coaching um in the off season and working out with you know other guys calling up a keenan allen you know guys in the league lean on each other a lot to just get better especially from a youth standpoint with those uh elder statesmen but i love this fit i love this pick in a sense i still would have probably rather malik here because i uh -huh. think malik would have paired very well with michael wilson but i think either way you get yourself a number one caliber receiver to go with Trey McBride, uh, Michael Wilson going into year two, probably bring back Hollywood Brown on the team friendly deal. Like you can't, if you call Kyler Murray, you can't be mad at either, at either situation. No, nah, and I, I went with Rome because I was just thinking he was a bigger body, right? You know, yeah, and, and, yeah. and that'll probably be more attractive. That 6'2", 6'3", 220 pound right. And then, like you said, the one question I had was like, okay, how fast is he, right? And then he showed how fast he was. So uh, he's a guy that can get vertical, right? Went in the slot, went on the outside. And I think he can kind of just help balance some things out. But I, I like the fact that his contested catch situation, and we know that Kyler Murray, you know, he don't mind throwing that thing up and giving his – um his his wide receivers opportunity. And Keith, I wanted to ask Root before we close this out. Pick number six, right? I, I love you know, we both have been very adamant and very loud on this part about how we feel about Daniel Jones and him getting that contract extension when he got it. Jaden Daniels, is this a situation where you feel like, all right, going into training camp, it's gonna be an open competition, or you think it's gonna be a situation where they're going to let Daniel, like, if this is the pick, if this happens, because, like, a lot of the rumblings from, it's crazy, from Mobile all the way to to the Combine, a lot of things I heard was the Giants are a team that is still looking at quarterback heavy, and they're worried about the they Falcons. Should. <laughs> I agree, but I wasn't expecting you to say that. Oh, but, I was, you know, but they're worried about the Falcons and then the Vikings possibly getting super aggressive if New England was to trade back and to try to trade up with them, trade up in front of them, if Jaden falls to them or they're able to get Jaden at all, like trade up and get him, whatever, if Jaden falls to them, Keith, is this a situation where you think, hey, you let Daniel Jones go out there, prove why we we drafted Jaden in the first four or five games and then let Jaden take over? Or do you think they, they make it an open competition? Yeah, it's it's an open competition for me, DP, entering camp. And it, it it's not even about Daniel Jones. I'm playing Jaden Daniels when I feel like he's ready, right? So whether that's week one and we feel like we have everything or that's week six, right? Like I, I'm I'm going to be completely honest with you. And I, I don't mean to sound critical or, or, or I don't mean to sound this harsh, right? But yeah. Dan, once I draft Jaden Daniels, it's about Jaden Daniels and Daniel Jones is almost an afterthought for me in my process, especially moving forward because Brian Dayball, he's seen how quickly that thing turned, right? Like last year, they were in the playoffs, coach of the year type situation, and the fans were happy. And then this year, 
they don't make the playoffs and they had a pretty bad season, right? And the fans were like, oh, it's Brian Dayball's fault. If I'm Brian Dayball, I'm not putting myself in that situation anymore. But let me want to keep scrolling DP to six, I think seven, eight, nine. Now, the New York Jets, I want to go to 10, man. New York Jets getting Malik neighbors. I, I think this is an electric get for them. And the, the sneaky spot, I almost put them, but I'm like, the Atlanta Falcons can't do that again, right? I was about to potentially put them with the Atlanta Falcons, Malik neighbors. But I like them with the New York Jets. And this is a storyline, DP, when draft-wise, we're going to have to talk about more because the, the Jets, are like, they're in a win-now mode, meaning they have to win this year because we don't even know if there's going to be a next year right like the two-year situation was hey you know he's going to play 2023 and 2024 well the Achilles snaps right and then now you just only potentially have him for one year so you have to be all in and you have to kind of compensate for the the learning curves of just being a team and the camaraderie and all of those things you have to figure all of that out in one year and catch lightning in a bottle no 100 percent. i think pairing him with gary wilson Makes a lot of sense. And then, like you said, Aaron Rodgers gets to walk out there with two explosive run-after-catch guys that can attack the ball at the catch point. He'll have a lot of fun with both of those wide receivers being his number one and number two heading into 2024. Yeah, now nah, 100% with DP. Let's keep this thing going and flowing, man. L listen, that was picks one through 10. Now let's get through picks 11 through 20. Well, there's going to be some cornerbacks coming off the board. There's going to be some edge rushers coming off the board, and there may be another quarterback appearance, DP. So coming up next is picks 11 through 20. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Let me repeat that. New customers get $150 back in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. You can bet on all your favorite NBA players like Giannis Antetokounmpo, Jimmy Butler, Bam, out of the bio, LeBron James, Steph Curry, you name it, you can bet on them and their teams, the Denver Nuggets, my Detroit Pistons, your Boston Celtics. You can bet on all of these things with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and so much more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel is the official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Picks 11 through 20. At number 11, we have a new CB1 on the board. The Minnesota Vikings select, excuse me, Nate Wiggins, cornerback out of Clemson. At pick 12, the Denver Broncos select J.J. McCarthy, quarterback out of Michigan. At pick 13, the Las Vegas Raiders select Talese Fuaga, offensive tackle from Oregon State. At pick 14, the New Orleans Saints select Leitu Latu, edge rusher out of UCLA. <clears throat> At pick 15, the Indianapolis Colts select Jared Verse, edge rusher out of Florida State. At pick 16, the Seattle Seahawks select Byron Murphy II, uh, interior defensive lineman out of Texas. At pick 17, the Jacksonville Jaguars go with Quinion Mitchell, cornerback out of Toledo. At pick 18, the Cincinnati Bengals select Amarius Mims, offensive tackle out of Georgia. At pick 19, the Los Angeles Rams select Darius Robinson, Edge out of Missouri, and at pick 20, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Kool-Aid McKinstry, cornerback out of Alabama. <clears throat> Let's go back up to the top. There's a new CB1 in the crib, Keith, and there's my guy, Nate Wiggin. Talk to me. What happened? Because we all know he ran the fast, but he, he had the hip flexor, so he couldn't finish working out. But th did you see everything you needed to see just from that 40? Well, I mean, I guess, and this this is the context of the mock drafts, right? Whether it's my CB1 or a mock draft, meaning mocking what I'm thinking is going to happen, right? And I think that this cornerback race is so close that something like a 40-yard dash time or, you know, testing at elite level um, is going to tip the scales one way or another. And that one way is for Nate Wiggins because how fast he ran right up. Uh, Terry on on what I think he ran a four or five one. Uh, Kool Aid yeah, wasn't able to run. Yeah. Quinion ran pretty fast, but I think people are going to also factor in the height perspective too, right? So I just, I, I believe 
after the combine, you're talking about post combine, what is a reaction for me is that Nate Wiggins will probably be the first corner off the board because he checks the length, the athleticism, right? Running really fast, ball skills, that type of thing. Um, so that that's why I had him as the first cornerback off the board. It's kind of mocking what I believe the NFL thought process would be trying to decipher between these cornerbacks that is such a tightly contested race. No, I, I 100%, right? He came in 6'1, 173. And to run a four two nine, and his 10 yard split was at almost one six, it was a one five nine. That lets you know that flying tw- that play where he chased down Amari, uh, Amari Hampton, uh, the running back from North Carolina. He, he forced a fumble, he came yep. from behind the pack, right? That that shows that flying 20, flying 30, that that speed is real. So you know me, like he was always in the battle for CB1, but I agree with you. Like the fact that he tested the way he did, right? 428. He jumped 36. He had a 10-7 in the broad. He just couldn't finish the rest of the drills because of the hip flexor. And you know, I mean the, the ball production on tape, the competitiveness, the click and close, all the stuff that he sh- showed on tape athletically showed up at the combine. Yep, no, I agree 100%. And then DP, we know we talked about the Denver Broncos, JJ McCarthy. Yeah. I think people that that's not crazy anymore, right? JJ McCarthy going in the top 15. I think people are starting to turn the corner right and starting to dive and actually finally dive into the film, right? Like finally watch the film and and and, and get us a lot. the fact that he was like he missed some of those deep shots at the at the combine, but I truly feel like I I I feel like he was just trying to show off his arm. Like I, I didn't even yeah. feel like he was trying to complete them passes as much, but like he heard some of the rumbles that for some reason people didn't think he had the NFL legitimate arm. He was out there slinging that thing 60 plus. <laughs> like so, yeah, he's got a legitimate arm, guys. Like so don't really trip off of the off of the some of the throws and still they don't even know a lot of these receivers. Like he wasn't throwing to his guys. He was throwing the guys that he just met uh probably that day. Yep, can you keep scrolling down so? Yeah. So this this if you ask me the combination that got a little tricky it was this this fourteen through seventeen period mm. right here like I, I felt really good about mocking late too loud to to the New Orleans Saints my question is this DP um do you feel that the Ed like that late two and Jared Verse are gonna go even higher because you know I had Dallas Turner at eight right. And then lot two and verse falling at 14 and 15. Lot two going to the Saints at 14, verse going to the Colts at 15. Is that too low? Because when I was looking at how the board fell, I'm like, man, these are middle of the first round guys. I kind of feel like that as far as a, you know, like I guess they're if it was a big board, right? And I was ranking the players, but also it's like, will they be prioritized because they're edge rushers? Yeah, I think it's it's gonna be interesting. I do think that we may see two. In the top 15, it just depends on which two, right? Like, and, and when you see, I think the conundrum is going to be where I look at <clears throat> Jared Verse and I say, I have a strong side defensive end. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. powerful, hand in the dirt. He can bring those things to the table. I look at Lay Two and I'm like, all right, Lay Two could play with his hand in the dirt, but he might be better standing up. But it's like, all right, then I try and put it towards. Dallas Turner, it the, the arm length is superior, the speed, the, the, the athleticism, the agility, like those things are superior to Lay Two. I think Lay Two might have a better bend, and of course he's more polished. But I'm like, I think that's where the conundrum is going to be, Keith. Where a team says, "Well, do I take Turner over Law Two? Even like if because I think Verse may be the first one off the board, right? Because of his ability against the run and his pass rushing ability." But I think that that edge two spot is going to be determined between Dallas Turner and Lay two. And I think for teams that prioritize physical gifts, that's going to lean in, into the into the direction of your the number eight pick in this draft in your mock draft. That's Dallas Turner. Yeah, no, I, that 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 was kind of my thought process too. Was that that athleticism, and we've seen that right? Like edge rush is a position that people, you know, they care about forty times. Rit, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, oh man, this is a high caliber athlete. DP, the Marius Mims to the Cincinnati Bengals, right? And obviously, this is post NFL Combine, seeing him work out, seeing him move. I, I, I've, and we'll talk about it, right? My concerns with him in the run game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as a pass protector, I think this was a good selection for the Bengals just from a perspective of, hey, Joe Burrow likes to hold on to the football. You need a potentially high caliber pass protecting right tackle. Right. And, and that's what I kind of I was thinking about. I'm like, man, maybe the Bengals should go 
almost the opposite thought process of our ta tackles maybe don't need to be heavy run game guys, but heavy pass protection guys, and that's what Amarius Mams is. And it's crazy he's talking to uh, some sources at the Combine and people who are very good with the offensive line play, scouting, things of that nature. And the thing that came up about Mims, <clears throat> you talked about the run game. Everybody, like, we we see eye to eye on that. They saw the same thing. It was like, yeah, it, you got to coach up the footwork, different things like that. He's got to get better in the run game. But there's like pass pro-wise, he arguably has some of the best like and cleanest sets, even over a Joe Alt and, Pat, and true just – Pass protection, cutting off access, arm length, power, athleticism, the combination of physical gifts and more like technical refinement in terms of his hands. Like there's a chance that he's a top 20 pick for sure. I think the only thing that hurt him was literally that literally hurt him was his hamstring. During I think yeah. his second 40, he pulled up and he and he was out for the rest of the event because of the hammies. So the, the questions about his like, can he stay healthy, right? He got hurt this year at Georgia with a lower body injury. I think it was like a foot or an ankle and the stuff like that. The hammy popping up during, like, at the worst possible time for him, right? During the actual combine, it's like, come yep. on, man. Like, that's, especially during the 40. Like, you know what I mean? Run the first time and just say, forget it and go do the field <laughs> trip. Like, I don't even need you to run the second 40. So I think that's where he may slip is if teams feel like, man, is he going to be, What's the best availability? What's the best ability? Availability. Is he going to consistently be available? But skill wise, I've heard some people say he could be a top ten pick uh, from the, being down foots on the you know boots on the ground in in, uh, in Indianapolis. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, DP, let's keep this thing going, man. We 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 knocked out picks eleven through twenty. Now we're going twenty one through thirty two to wrap this thing up. And DP, I'm gonna say this, man. It's the teaser. There are some wide receivers coming off of the board, DP, in these next couple picks. Picks. So coming up next, we're doing picks twenty one through thirty two. This show is sponsored by Better Help. What's the first thing you do if you had an extra hour in your day? Would you go for a run, take a nap, go for a walk, read a book, uh, help a friend or a family member? Or would you be stuck at work doing more of, you know, work? Okay, so if you had more time, if time was unlimited, how would you use it? Why would you want more time? More time for what? Therapy can help you find what matters most to you so you can do more of it. And what's the what's the results of this? Being the best version of yourself, and that's what therapy provides. To have someone that's un up objective and unbiased on your life tell you and help you find your way. So if you've been thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try, all right? It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on thank y'all for making locked on nfl draft your first listen today and every day shout out for being our every day is let's close this thing out at pick 21 the miami dolphins select right tackle jc latham out of alabama at pick 22 the philadelphia eagles select xavier 421 worthy wide receiver out of texas at pick 23 the Houston Texans select Braden Fisk, defensive tackle from Florida State at pick 24. The Dallas Cowboys select Kingsley Suo Matia, offensive tackle from BYU at pick 25. The Green Bay Packers select Troy Faltanu, offensive tackle from Washington at pick 26. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver from LSU at pick 27. The Arizona Cardinals select Ennis Rakestraw Jr., cornerback out of Missouri at pick 28. The Buffalo Bills select Keyon Coleman, wide receiver from Florida State, at pick 29. The Detroit Lions select Terion Arnold, cornerback out of Alabama, at pick 30. The Baltimore Ravens select Chop Robinson, edge rusher from Penn State, at pick 31. The San Francisco 49ers select Graham Barton, offensive lineman from Duke, and at pick 32, the Kansas City Chiefs select Xavier Leggett, wide receiver from South Carolina. Keith, I got to go up to the fastest man. In the world today, DP, the, yeah, and not to cut you off, but this yeah. was probably my most fa the most favorite part of the draft. I, I thought this is where it got fun, right? When fun, you take yeah. some swings on some players, and it was some you know interesting teams, right? And in, in, in the pairings match, and I think also the value match too. Back, no, 100 percent. Oh, this back end stretch is going to be it's fun with mocks. I think it's going to be fun in the real draft 
come April as well because there's a lot that could happen. We could see some trade downs, some trade ups from the second round. We could see all type of stuff happening from picks 21 through 32. But Xavier Worthy, right now until the uh, Summer Olympics happen, he's the fastest man in the world, and nobody's gonna <laughs> tell me different, Keith. Like just to to put him, and this is a and it's crazy because before, even months before this event, he's been a hot name to the Philadelphia Eagles in our mock drafts. Like he will always find himself in either one of our mocks at some point in time falling to the Eagles back more so when they were projected to be 32, 30 to 32. I do. I remember that. This was early on, early on in the season. Yep. And he fits so well. He brings the element, right? You talking about what does Quez Watkins bring? Speed. But what does he struggle with? Route running. What does he struggle with? Catching the football, tracking the football. Worthy has some concentration drops, but he tracks the ball well. He's explosive and dynamic, but he also runs very good routes. And you're talking about putting him in well, I always talk about this. If you're Philly, you bring another receiver in, you can bring a guy in that does not have to fit just one role. He can play the Z, and you can kick down Devonta Smith into the slot. You know what I'm saying? Or he can play the slot, whatever. Like, you can create mismatches and matchups that you want, advantageous matchups to really stress a defense because you know – you cannot, and then that was this going. This going to open up that run game, Keith. We're going to see twenty twenty two Jalen Hurts again, Keith, what? because of the fact that you can't drop a safety down with Xavier Worthy on the field because you know the deep ball is always a possibility. Yeah, you don't even know if you could play man, right? Like that. That's Max. how scary this situation is. And I'll even say this: I put him at twenty two, and you, you know, I've talked about Xavier Worthy on this podcast, and you know, I, I like Xavier Worthy. Obviously, the concentration jobs, but even before the the forty time, right? I was like, this guy, the speed translates, right? Like you see the fact that he's faster than everybody else on the field. You see that on the film. So I think the, the 4 2 one for me was just, it, it was verification that this guy is, is a flat out flyer. And I think there's speed and then there's, hey, I'm the fastest guy to ever run a 40 yard dash speed, right? Like there, there's different elements to that. So I really like this. DP, the next pick, Houston Texans, Braden Fist. And you know, in my last mock draft, probably about a month ago, I think it was right before the senior ball, right after the senior ball, I had Braden Fist in the first round, but falling all the way, you know, at the back end of the first round of Kansas City Chiefs taking him right at, at pick 32. But I think he's moving up. I think people are finally getting on board that, hey, this defensive tackle from Florida State is pretty doggone good. And I like this pairing from – because I told you, Brayton has a little bit of a reckless, high-motor type of um, mm -hmm. style to his game, and so does Will Anderson, right? And I think you when you you, you know that you're going into a bar fight. When you go and play the Houston Texans, right? If you put those two guys on the same team together, and I, I really like this pairing, especially when you think about the Miko Ryan's and the culture he's trying to establish. The Braden Fist uh, to the Houston Texans would be a fun situation if you're talking about trench play. No, one hundred percent. I love that, right? And I, I think I tweeted out during his workout, like this dude was moving like a linebacker, Keith. Like four seven eight, the four seven eight, the the fluidity, the quick feet, the change of direction. I was like. We sure this is a defensive lineman? Like, you sure we don't want to put him at Mike Backer? Like, <laughs> he's moving fluid out there, man. So, like, I, I think this would be – you think about if you're the Tennessee Titans and you're working on rebuilding this offensive line in front of Will Levis, this is a pair, this is a draft pick that's going to scare the daylights out of you because you're like, man, come on. Like, we, we, we just got Joe Alt, but now you're going to put Braden Fisk right beside, you know, Will Anderson Jr., right? You're trying to figure – you got to figure out that offensive line quickly. Keith, I, I go down – to pick 26 and i love this because I, of course you know what this morning was it uh mike evans yeah mike two evans. Years. he resigned yep you know, 53 mil got 35 guaranteed so the first year is truly get the full the the, the guaranteed year right and the second year was like hey we'll see how you play in 2024 and if you don't play yep. well we can walk away but you don't want to walk away with nothing so bringing Brian Thomas Jr. into the fold where he can learn from one of the best big man receivers that we've seen, not a guy that just has relied on the jump ball and 50-50 catches, but when he came into the league, he was an explosive, deep vertical threat as well who could also sink his hips and run routes. And that's the kind of thing that we worry about with BTJ, with Brian Thomas Jr., is his route running, working in the middle of the field, beating consistent press man and man-to-man -man coverage. If you, Whenever you face a guy, at the end of the day, no matter who you are, you're always going to find somebody that can run with you in the NFL. 
right? Especially when you're the receiver, you always gonna find a corner that also ran the four two five or four three four, and that can stride, run with you, break down, keep tempo, keep stay in phase. And I think that's where you want to see putting him in that receiver room with Chris Godwin, right? And then Mike Evans, that's a lot of knowledge. That's a lot of route running, a lot of processing that they'll be able to instill in this young man to help him reach his ceiling. Yeah, no, I'm right there, which I want to go DP to pick 28, Keon Coleman. And because I, I know too. people are going to, yeah, people are going to talk about this because he didn't run a fast 40. But what he did, DP, was all of his testing when he can't like the explosive testing, right? Like the vertical jump, the broad jump, things like that. And I know that, you know, they um, they do the RAS score. All of those were really good, right? Like they were testing in, in like top tier. So I think this is just simply explosive playmate. That's why I called this guy. And I kept saying he's somewhere between Brandon Marshall and Des Bryant, right? I, mm -hmm. I just, I like him somewhere in between there. And then this is the thing that he can run routes. He can play across the middle of the field. He can make contested catches. So I just think, and we obviously have to operate in a vacuum vacuum of Stefan Diggs is happy and he's going to be there right he's going to be there until he's not there and then that's when we can alter stuff so Stefan Diggs being able to run every route Keon Coleman being able to do a lot of routes right and then now if you have Gabe Davis he's your vertical guy you know your big body vertical guy and I think that gives you a little bit more flexibility uh getting a guy like Keon Coleman because then also Josh Allen you know he can fit those balls in the tight windows right even if you want to say Keon Coleman is not separate but one thing you can't question is Keon Coleman's hands right and we've seen that in the gauntlet drill man the guy I think he had like the fastest time running through the gauntlet Only drill and those hands were just yeah, those hands were just sticky, man. So I, I still believe in Keon Coleman as a first round wide receiver. And you know, you know, you know, for for those who don't know the full numbers, right? The, the number that's polarizing to everyone is the four six one. But his ten yard split was a one five four. His vertical was a thirty eight. His broad was a ten seven. And like we just talked about, going through the gauntlet, right? Puka Nakua, I think, ran four six in the in the in the um the forty four last year, and he yep. was the fastest guy through the gauntlet. He caught everything, but he's staying. He's holding the line. He's running full speed. He's giving full effort, and he and it's just a simple fact. The matter is. Keon Coleman was never going to be a 4-3 guy to me. But at the same time, no one's ever running down the field in the NFL from a track stance at receiver. I'm sorry. like right. this It's just the 40 is so overblown because it's not even a real drill to test exactly what a football function is. They're not in that stance at the line of scrimmage. They're standing up. They're not in, in a, in a I, listen, I, keep, I ran track. I ran, I was a sprinter. I did four by one, 100 and 200. The most annoying thing about doing track was that stupid stance. I hated it. It was uncomfortable. Man, like, so if you don't have that background, too, like, Xavier Wars is a different cat. Like, yeah, you run 4 2 1. It don't really matter if you in a track stance or you, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he's got that world class speed, but I never expected Keon to be a 4 2 4 3 guy, Keith. Like, for me, 4 5, 4 5 was great, which I yeah, think I, also Devontae Adams ran a 4 6, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he did. I think he ran exactly a four six one. But yeah, I I, I thought that he would, if if he ran a four five five, I'd have been like, that's correct, right? So Keenan Allen, Allen ran a four seven, by the way, Keith. Um, that, yeah. So it's it's you know it's it's a lot of different elements to this situation. With DP pick thirty two to wrap this thing up, man. The Kansas City Chiefs getting who Xavier Leggett, man. And I thought he had an interesting testing situation because I know there's a lot of questions about his speed and. He tested kind of like how we talked about on this podcast, right? That it appears that he's one of the more explosive athletes, right? And you throw the vertical yeah. jump in there, you throw the 40 yard dash, you throw the broad jump. All of those are really good numbers. And I'll say this just when it comes down to the Kansas City Chiefs, right? If I'm some teams ahead of them, you have to play defense by playing offense, right? And what I'm saying is, is that if you see a good player on the board that the Kansas City Chiefs could use, draft them. And don't let the Kansas City Chiefs get him, right? That it, it, There has to be some type of collusion amongst the NFL. Because even a player like this, right, if if Zay Leggett falls to the Kansas City Chiefs and you pair him up with Rasheed Rice and Travis Kelsey, this is a much better wide receiver core. And that does not bode well for the rest of the NFL. So those teams, if the Miami Dolphins, right, you need you need an offensive tackle, take Xavier Leggett, right? If you're sitting there, somebody, Keon Copa, just take the wide receivers from them. This is how you beat the Kansas City Chiefs. You beat them in April. At the draft, right? You have to try to beat them in the draft because you do not want to let one of these high-profile wide receivers in a deep wide receiver class fall to them. Keith, four, three, nine. Look, first of all, let's go. Let's go to the. To, let me just close out with the height and weight stuff first, right? Six one, two twenty one, thirty one seven eight on the arm, nine inches even on the hands. 
439, 154-10 yard split, 40 inch vert, 10 7 in the broad. Yes, you keep him as far away from Pat Mahomes and Andy Reid and, and Travis Kelsey, Rashid. You keep them far, keep him far away from that offense. If you want any shot of keeping the, the Kansas City Chiefs from being at pick, picking at 32 again next year in the 2025 NFL draft, if you let this year happen, I don't think I got to say is good luck. Yeah, and that, that, that's just what it's going to be, DP. Well, listen, man, that wraps up another episode of the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, man, and not just any episode. That was a mock draft Monday, a fun mock draft Monday, man. Y'all make sure to comment and let us know how you feel about the mock draft. Do you like the picks that I gave you, Tim, or you dislike them? We can have that conversation, man, in the YouTube comments. Listen, hit the like button, and if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel because this is the best NFL draft content, man. We have fun. We watch the film. We go through the data. We look at everything, man, and we give our opinions based off of that man so we put the work in but listen man i am keith sanchez you can find me on x at the talent code that right there man that's my co-host man damian parson you can find him on x at dp underscore nfl like we always like to say y'all talk to us because we like to talk back go subscribe and follow for free on youtube wherever you listen to podcasts get the latest episode as soon as it is available thank you for making locked on nfl draft your first listen today and every day shout out for being our everydayers on tomorrow so we got more combine uh reactions overall takeaways really like who made money who fumbled a bag we'll get into all of that to close it out but listen come and join the conversation again tomorrow on the locked on podcast network your team every day